Okay guys, just a note to look out for there. If you do have VirtualBox already running on your machine and you've got maybe virtual machines running or in a save state, you'll need to shut those down. So that's what I've needed to do just in order to proceed with this download of VirtualBox. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna download this VirtualBox 6.1.4. And um, so this is the latest version as time of, at this time of recording. And um, I'm gonna install this on my Mac. I'm gonna make sure that I use my finger there to just authenticate and I'm going to hopefully install VirtualBox. This will be relatively quickly. Just while that's loading, let's just go on ahead and, and see. So that message there was saying that it was successfully installed. So I can close, I can move that to the bin and I should be able to start up my VirtualBox now. So this should be the latest version of VirtualBox. And once we've got that installed and there it is, Okay, that's what it will look like. Um, essentially what I can do now is move on to my next step. So what we're gonna do now is install this Kali Linux VirtualBox image. And essentially what Kali Linux is, and I've just put a, a brief introduction to it there for you folks, is it's a Debian-based Linux distribution um, and it's really aimed at pen testing and security auditing. So a lot of IT professionals around the world use this to use these tools that come uh, ready-made, built into this Kali Linux Linux distribution so that they can test their networks for vulnerabilities and so forth. So these are some of the tools we're gonna to be using in this over the next number of sessions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that link. Um, so I've, I've got this and then we'll take it one by one. So we'll pop this into our browser, we'll hit return and what you'll see is I've, I'm using this uh, link to directly take us to the Kali Linux um, download section here of the web page. So you'll notice it's uh, it's made by this company called Offensive Security, and you'll notice here that I'm gone into the Kali Linux VirtualBox images section. So if that doesn't appear when you click on the link, just ensure that you're not downloading a VMware image, you're installing the VirtualBox image. So my Mac is 64 bits, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on this to download this. Now, this is gonna take a few minutes to download. Um, you can see the version that I'm gonna download is, it's, well, first and foremost, it's 3.1 gigabytes, but you can see the version there is 20.1. Okay, so 2020.1, and that will take a few minutes to download on my connection. Now, what I've just done before this, guys, is I've actually, just before I shot this video, I actually took, um, I downloaded this, so I'm going to stop that there for a moment, because that's going to take some time, and what I did was I downloaded it to my drive, so a few, a little time ago, I downloaded this um, I actually downloaded it this morning. So you can see here in this case, guys, this is the downloaded file that will come down. Um, you'll see, notice here that it's in an OVA format, okay? And what you can actually do with this, folks, is you can actually double click on this and what will happen is it will open inside of, for example, um, for inside of VirtualBox. Now, um, in this case, I can literally go to, it's so in, the, in this case, it's saying source, maybe I need to select here, um, Okay, basically I need to go and select where I downloaded that from. I'm gonna click on Kali Linux. I'm gonna click on open. Okay, so I'm literally just selecting my Kali Linux. In here, what you can see is it gives all of the details of this virtual machine and it recommends a number of different things. So it sets up the CPU, it tailors it to your computer. It gives two gigs of RAM. Okay, it has lots of different things selected. Now, in a few moments, we'll see, I'm just gonna click on import now. And then what that's gonna do is, we'll have to agree to the terms and conditions of this GPL version three license. I'm gonna to agree to that. And that should start importing. And this will take usually two to three minutes, guys. So what's important here is that this is now um, installing this virtual machine into my virtualization platform, which is VirtualBox. And this should be relatively quickly. It does it in a couple of moments. And what we should see is when this is finished, we, our virtual machine should appear here. So what next are we going to do? Just while that's happening, guys, and while that's installing, I'm just gonna walk through a couple of steps. So what we're doing at the moment is we're importing this OVA file. What I'm gonna show you then is I'm gonna troubleshoot any potential startup problems because when I actually um, did this earlier on, I met a little bit of an issue. And what I did was I 
change the setting to, to allow the, the machine to start up. So just in case this happens with you guys, I'm gonna show you how to get around that problem. The next thing we're gonna do is log in. So as you can see probably on the screen here, it shows if I scroll down on this screen, it's not allowing me because it's doing that import still, but it gives us in this virtual machine, it gives us some defaults of Kali Kali for the username and the password. My best advice is to change the password in the terminal straight away to a password that's a strong password that you'll remember. Also, what I'll be doing straight away, folks, is I'll be adding an additional network card, so a virtual network card in this sense. So what usually comes along with this virtual machine is a network address translation and network, network card pre-installed that will allow you to go out onto the World Wide Web to download updates and so forth. But what we want to do is we want to also have a network card that's going to be visible to our host, like our own machine, if that's Windows or Mac OS, and to other virtual machines. So what we'll do is we'll actually set up a host-only adapter, and I'll walk through how you do this. The final thing what we'll do, folks, is we'll do an update to get the, the most up-to-date listing from the sources um, profile. And then what we'll do then is we'll do an upgrade and I'll walk through those steps with you. So now what we can see, folks, is we've got our Kali Linux. And you'll notice here that I've got, um, particularly I've got some information that comes with it that actually shows me the username and password straight out of the box. And if I try to start this, what you'll actually see is there's a little bit of a, a problem when we go to do this. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll walk you through how you can resolve this issue. So you can see straight away it tried to start and we get this um, error message and it points to this USB controller not found. So what we need to do here guys is we need to OK to this and what I'll do is I'll go into the settings and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into ports and click on this USB and what I'm going to do to to get rid of that message or that error occurring I'm going to just simply click to disable the USB controller and click OK. Once I do that um, I've just disabled the USB if you like. Now also just to take into consideration here folks we've got one network card associated this is a NAT adapter what we can actually do as well, and we might just log into to Kali for the first time, but later on what we'll do is we can add another adapter. I won't do it just yet. We'll log in to make sure it works and that we get started first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Start. And what that should do is it should start up my Kali Linux. So here it goes. I'm going to press Enter to start Kali Linux. Okay. And you can see it's going through the boot process and it should hopefully in a moment give me a prompt for my username and my password. Okay, so that will take usually a couple of, a few seconds. So here you can see um, enter in. So this is going to be, I'm going to be putting in my username here and I'm going to put in Kali of my password. Once I do that, it should log me in. Now, once I'm logged in, folks, it's nice to go into a terminal just to have a look to see what exactly we've got set up. So in this screen you can see I'm in my terminal now. I can do, um, so it's interesting that this is a Debian um, version of, of Linux and if you've been using Debian versions of Linux in the past you might have used the IF config to check the IP configuration of the machine. Now what's changed recently with newer versions of the Debian operating system is this command no longer works. So when we press enter, you can see there, bash is just basically saying command not found. The preferred command now is actually IP address or AP add if you want. So IP address and this will give us information about our adapters. Now what you'll notice is you'll get to have this loopback adapter, but also what you'll see is we have this Ethernet zero adapter and this is our NAT adapter. This is allowing us to get out on the internet. So for example, I should be able to ping google.com from here okay and you can see that that's working I'm pinging Google I'm getting out on the internet now again what I like to do is I like to from the very get-go I like to do a couple of things I like to set a new administrator password and how I do that is I set, type in P-A-S-S-W-D and what that's going to do is it's going to say hey what's your current password and that at the moment is Kali and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my new password. And this is my new strong password. So I'm going to type that in very carefully. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press enter and it's going to ask me to retype that again. So I'm going to do that again. 
And then now it's basically changed my password. So when I log in again in the future, it should change. So what I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm going to add another network card so that when I join other VMs to this virtual network, it will allow us to communicate between them. Okay, because I want a virtual sandbox where I can communicate between my Kali virtual machine and, for example, my Metasploitable 2 virtual machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this terminal for a moment and I'm going to click on this little button here to, to say log out and I'm literally going to shut down this, this VM. That's going to power it off and you can see it's now powered off. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to have a look at my networking settings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, I'm happy with my network, uh, this network address translation adapter one, but what I want to do is I want to add a second adapter here. So I'm going to click on adapter two and I'm going to click enable adapter. And here you can see it's asking me, well, what do you want to attach it to? What I want to do is I want to attach it to a host only adapter. So essentially what I'll be saying is I want to say that with this virtual machine, with this Kali Linux, I want to be able to communicate with other virtual machines and I want to be able to communicate with my host machine. In my case, a Mac OS um, with my Mac machine. What you'll also notice here, folks, is you'll see that it's, it's saying host only adapter and it's saying what network do you want it to connect it to? And in this case, it's saying VBox Net Zero. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to show you in a moment where this comes from. So I'm going to click on OK. And that should basically set up so I can see now it's confirmed. I've got a NAT and a host only adapter. Now, just to show you where that comes from, if I go up to file on my VirtualBox menu, and it might be in a slightly different place for your Windows machine, but you'll be able to find it somewhere in your options, okay? Where you can go to is what's called a host network manager. And in here, you can see I've actually got two set up at the moment, these VirtualBox networks, this host only network. So what, I, what if, for example, you didn't have any, you can see there's my settings. What you, you should ensure, guys, is that you should ensure that there's, a, there's an IP address set and to ensure that this box is ticked because that's important. We want to enable a DHCP server so that my Kali Linux machine will then get an IP address in this range. So you can see if I hover over it, it can show me my DHCP server. It's saying it's enabled and it's saying various different um, settings that it can be applied. So if, for example, you didn't have this set up, it's as simply as going to create. So what we could do is create another one here. In this case, it's saying VBoxNet2. And the only thing that I would say to look out for is just make sure you enable that box, okay? Now, at the moment, I'm happy with my machine, Kali, to be uh, involved with this VBox0, Net0. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. And what I'm now going to do is I'm gonna click on Start. And what's interesting about this, and this is why I want to um, show you this on a video, is that although we set up this, you may find that in your, when you go in to have a look at your network settings, it may not appear straight away. So I'm going to show you how to go about sh showing or displaying both network cards and to ensure that you do pick up an, uh, an IP address on this host only network. So in this case, I'm going to say Kali. And then in this case, now I'm going to enter in my new password. Okay. So that's going to log me in. I'm going to go straight away back into my terminal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another IPA or an IP address command. And you can see not a lot has changed, folks. Well, in fact, something has changed. And I just want to alert you to this. We've still got our loopback adapter. But what's actually happened now is you can see that it's recognized two other adapters. You can see ETH0 and ETH1. And you'll notice here, I've actually got an IP address from this range. So you'll notice here, it's coming from the range 192.168.56, my host only network, okay, dot 118 in this case it's given me. So that's my host only adapter. But you'll, you might have noticed now, guys, the IP address for my NAT, NAT um, interface has now disappeared. In order to ensure that we want both of these to work, because at the moment now, if I try to ping out to the internet, so let's just show you, if I go to try google.ie or google.com, whichever we want to do, you can see here, it's basically saying, sorry, I don't know how to get there. Because at the moment, all it's seeing is this virtual network, this, this virtual network. And again, we don't have any external access without our NAT interface being 
enabled and working. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and get an interface address now to come up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click up here on my network connections and I'm going to go edit connections. Okay, so this is editing our networking settings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. So there's our wired connection. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this little plus connection here. So again, you can see that that's, that's there. I'm going to click on the little plus. And what I'm going to say is it's saying choose a, a connection type. Let's say, what would you like, Ethernet or Wi-Fi? I'm just going to stick with Ethernet. And I'm going to click on Create. And then what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm just going to check. I'm not going to manually set anything here. I'm going to make sure that I go over to IPv4 settings and just ensure that my DHCP information is set, which it is. So it's set to automatic pick up an address. So that, I'm happy that that's the way it is. So that's, that's good. So what I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm going to go back to general just to make sure there's no other boxes that I need to tick. Everything looks fine. Um, these, all these other settings are absolutely okay. The, the key thing there is to just have the IPv4 settings. So that's absolutely fine. I can leave it as Ethernet connection one. That's okay. Um, I'm just looking for if there's any. There we go. I need to just expand my window there just to make sure that I need to click on save now, guys. So once I click on save, it should save that connection. So I've now got two connections. Now, in order to test this, guys, I'm going to go back to my terminal window, and this time, I'm going to type in IPA again, and hopefully this time, what I should see is I should see two IP addresses, one being my NAT and one being my host only. Let's give that a try. And indeed now, folks, you can see the difference. See here, under Ethernet Zero now, my network, network address adapter, I've now got my NAT adapter back. So showing the 10.0.2.15. This allows me external access out of my VM, through my host machine, out onto the internet and back again, of course. Whereas I've still got my local adapter. So now if I go to type ping www.google.com, okay, this should work. And we can see now we've got connectivity. Also, guys, what's important to note here is is that we've also got an adapter on a virtual network. And my host, my MacBook in this case, can also communicate with this virtual machine. So I know that this virtual machine has an IP address of 192.168.56.118. So what I can actually do on my Mac here, I'm just gonna open up a terminal window. So you can see I'm just opening up a terminal window on my Mac. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ping that IP address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ping 192.168.56.118. So this is, I'm trying to ping now from my host machine, my MacBook Pro, to my Kali Linux machine. And now you can see that I'm able to ping from my host to my VM. Okay, so that's superb. So we're getting successful ping messages. So that's fantastic. So this is the end of part one, folks. So what have we done so far? We've installed the latest version of VirtualBox 6.1 as of recording today, and we've installed an OVA Kali Linux VM, okay? And in this case, 20.1. What we've also done with the Kali machine is we've changed our password, and what we've done is we've added an additional host-only network card and we've ensured that both the, the NAT and the host only are both enabled and working. Okay guys, I hope this has been valuable for you. Um, in just a moment I'm going to record part two where we'll go on to look at Metasploitable and getting our VMs to communicate with one another. Okay, thanks for viewing.